Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to another edition of Living Simply Fun. I'm your host, Aries. Aaron will be joining us soon, I think, or Aaron, I should say. Right now, I got my co-host, Moppy, with me. Today's a, today's a special topic. Moppy's kind of semi-wet still from the rain. You look how cute he is. So, today's topic is going to be about Christmas gifts and what to expect and why kids, um... Well, I'll have Aaron do the text part in the uh, comment box for a channel because he's good at that uh, and the tag. But this is about Christmas gifts. That's right, Christmas gifts. Not any type of Christmas gifts, but Christmas gifts that kids expect, you know. And Aaron and I were talking about this today on our dog walk with him and Blizzard. Uh, look how cute Moppy is. This guy deserves a little biscuit for being on camera today. I had to bribe him with a biscuit. He's part Schnauzer and part, or not part Schnauzer, part Lhasa Apso and part Shih Tzu. He's got more of the sh Lhasa Apso head and the Shih Tzu hair, I think. But nonetheless, some people say he's ugly. I find him cute and adorable. Even though he's one needy, retarded dog at times. Hi. There you go, my co-host, Moppy. So anyways, Moppy's sitting on the chair right now. Let's see. Uh, so Christmas is kind of a time of, well, here's my co-host, Aaron. I'll let him, him take uh, over for I don't even know where we are. I just started with the story, you know, the Christmas time. Remember what, how we are as kids, how we were more content, we didn't get very angry like the nowadays for iPads, iPhones, for gifts. Well, we always had our disappointments, but it was never about the fact that we didn't necessarily get the exact thing that we asked for. I mean, when we were kids, I don't know how it is for everybody, but I had to come up with a list. I had to write down a list, and I'd actually go through a catalog, and I remember getting out the safety scissors and cutting out the things I want and getting the glue stick and... Uh, gluing it to a piece of paper and handing it to my grandmother and say this is what I'd like and then I'd go to Santa and I was told to always generalize so I'd be like oh I want G.I. Joe's oh I want uh, you know Transformers uh, oh I want I Legos say, I never this? got specific saying oh I want this exact Lego well, hold, set hold, hold you know? I would like to just say from the bottom of my heart for a lot of you uh, out there um, I don't know where it is it might be in the Anyways, and it doesn't matter where it is, but let me give you an example. It is, for example, back in the day, uh, rolling up for Christmas. Uh, hold on, first of all. The whole thing about you had the little glue stick and you had to do the thing to put the little paper together, like your own Christmas wish with the pictures to help your grandmother out. We had to do that every stinking year in school in special education. It was like, it's like, why? I had to find uh, something to say this. No, uh, what I was going to say is I have a catalog. I got catalogs every year. Some were like this thick, some were thin. And it had one of the hobbies I liked was model trains. And I wanted certain trains at certain times. And by God, my mom found a way to get them. But my sister decided, ow, it's not worth that much. But it was made in America at the time. And it was a very expensive train set. Yeah, it pissed me off that we lost it. But... I enjoyed my Lionel train set, but those are things, you know, that you say, oh, I want this or but I want that. What I was trying to say is back when we were kids, though, we kind of had to generalize to Santa. We couldn't sit there and say, oh, I want the Bo Jackson autographed NCAA football from when he was with Auburn in Auburn colors, blah, blah, blah. And then you find out, the parents find out looking up on it, that it's a $499 item. That's something that perhaps me as a kid would have been... Like, whoa, I want this. I'd roll but, up the magazine and be like... And I, I could see certain kids saying, this is all I want. I swear, this is all I want. I'll never ask for anything else. But, you know, nowadays, kids don't even do that. They're not like, the only thing I want for Christmas is a pony. And if I get a pony, I'll never, ever, 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 ever ask for anything ever again from anyone. Because that's the only thing I ever need. Ralphie, what would you like for Christmas? I want a pony. <laughs> On an official Red Rider uh, 650 shot range model air rifle. Yeah, so you can shoot my pony. <laughs> no, your pony's right there. See, he's laying down. He's a miniature <laughs> pony named Moppy. So, um, uh, anyways. Anyways. <laughs> wax on. <laughs> wax off. <laughs> 
Brain on, brain off. <laughs> I need. I, that's what I need for Christmas is something where I can have a little switch, just turn the brain on and make sure it's constantly working when it's supposed to and doesn't get sidetracked. And brain fart! <laughs> yeah, or I need gas X for the brain. <laughs> um, yeah, let's see. Um... I don't know. Today's kids, though, it seems that anymore, it's like even a five-year-old sitting there, I want an iPhone 4 or whatever. I don't know. I don't even follow phones. I can't tell you anything. But it's Or one of these. But by specific brand, model, amount of RAM on it or whatever, or memory uh, yeah, space like, I or want hard drive the, I space. Want the, or, for example, I don't, I'm computer the, illiterate. Oh, this is okay? the original iPad, 16 gig. There is other ones around my house that are iPad, mind you. This is the original, first series. They'll sit there and say, I want the 128 or 256, uh, uh, 256 gig uh, iPad mini or iPad Air 2. And then the mother goes and goes, oh, okay, Jimmy. Oh, $9.99? Come on, you can get one for $4.99, but a kid with a 5 year old doesn't need one. I, I want 24.5 Pop Rocks or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know. That it, it, to me, when I was a kid, had I done something like that and said, "This is what I will have," and it's obviously something a kid shouldn't be having, my grandmother would have looked at me and been like, <laughs> "You know," she would have laughed, and then she would have gotten me something like a leapfrog pad and been like, "Here, this is for kids," and it's like, "But this isn't what I wanted." I you. Sorry, you asked for a computer. This is a computer for kids. I'm not giving you the computer you asked for because you are still a child. You do not need a $800 piece of equipment. You get this $50 piece of equipment meant for children. Mom, I want my own portable phone. Fine. What did I end up with? A portable phone. Yeah, and at a time which portable phones were extremely expensive and didn't really exist. Yes. But... Yeah, your mom... Your mom would pamper you by going out of the way and buying things she should have smacked you. I never you. got my your, own Your computer. mom bought you things that she should have smacked you in the face and said, Rita, no. You don't know. <laughs> Instead, you just got them because you were disabled and your mom, I don't know, felt like she needed to make it up to you or needed to pamper you. So she'd actually go out and buy things for you that you probably should not have gotten. I mean, there was one Christmas where she apparently got like four video game systems. All because she asked for them. Her mom was a waitress. Well, hold on. My favorite part. Going home. Back of the bus. Bus driver's driving. Yeah. Is this Domino's? Yeah, I'd like to have a pizza delivered. Uh-huh. Okay. And then when they were delayed by a while, you know, and it was like 45 yep. minutes for and, 30 and minutes. Free pizza. Slam the door. And then let's see. What else did your uh, mother do for One you? year, my mother, in 91, I believe it was, I was sitting there, and I had a friend who was black who met, got me to meet the head coach of the Seattle Huskies, and I got to meet the entire Husky team. They were getting ready to go uh, to a game, and they said, well, more likely we'll be going to the Rose Bowl. I said, go Huskies. So while talking to them, this guy asked me what I wanted for Christmas. I told him, well, he was doing some funny things. Well, Mom went out of her way, and I had the, the, uh, the Atari Lynx, the Atari Jaguar, the Atari Jaguar CD, I already had a Super NES, I had an NES, which they were still selling NES parts and products at the time, but they didn't have the Rob robot thing, that was like the collectible thing, I got Rob, you know, but the little Dave decided to dissect it, but anyways, it pissed me off. Anyways, uh, I got the Turbo Express, the Turbo Duo, and the Turbo Graphic 16 with Turbo CD. My mom didn't know the Turbo Duo was the Turbo Graphic 16 and CD. And I got um, other well, systems as well. I was just going to say another way that mom pampered you was she ended up getting you that portable TV that was uh, just like in Rain Man. And you'd walk around school with it and the teachers couldn't take it from you or anything. Cause, you know, had I taken that to school, I would have lost it and never seen it again. Either because a fellow classmate stole it, or because a teacher confiscated it and wouldn't give it back, or because I was told that I couldn't have it anymore at school and my parents would keep it somewhere and hidden, and I'd get it years later and it wouldn't work anymore. 
Uh, and besides, they would never have spent that much money. And of course, Rita's looking for it now because I mentioned it. Because uh, she's got to show it off. Um, but, yeah, kids today, they, they shouldn't be demanding what they get. Parents should... Ray, well, what are you doing? I spent a couple hundred dollars oh, on TV, Rain off. Man, and you prefer to watch a clothes dryer. Turn it off. Where are you going to be when Wapner's on? Wapner. The, Wapner's on. The, gray one, the green one always falls first. It is the Rain Man TV. She also had to have it. Also got it in black, too. She had to have it, so her mother got it. They still semi-work, too. Even though it's analog, yeah. That's actually if they can pick up a tower anywhere because they don't really so do those anymore. Exactly, and same with the, uh, they have portable TVs, but you get the point. There is also a color, ver I had three color versions too. That for Which school. were even more expensive. And I had this little dongle Stop thing yelling. that I really loved that I don't think he's ever seen. It's somewhere in my desk, but it was about this big. You plug it into the extended part of the message. audio jack, and then you can hook your Super NES or NES up to your, through a uh, RF adapter, and you can use a little TV to play games. I was doing that, too, growing up. Anyways, uh, my thought is also there's another problem, is a lot of parents who are willing to go out and get their kids the latest iPhone, iPad, uh, or whatever, or uh, Google whatever, Chromebook, yeah, it doesn't matter. If you're going to buy your kid something, then make it from yourself. Don't make it from Santa Claus. Uh, that's one thing I hated as a kid is, what did Santa bring you? And immediately it's like, oh, Santa brought me this. And when kids believe in Santa Claus and all that, and you're told that Santa Claus did something nice for some person by getting them an iPhone... And Santa Claus gets you, say, a new hat, and that's all your family could afford to give you from Santa Claus. Then, and you're like, well, look at my new Astros hat. And everybody's like, oh, well, Santa brought me this game system. Santa ended up bringing me this uh, TV. You know, make the expensive gifts from yourself, not from Santa Claus. Uh, and, and honestly, I wouldn't even give the expensive gifts for another reason. Is essentially kids will make up who they got it from. So, if mom and dad gave you a PS4, a lot of kids will rub it into the other kid's face. Santa brought me a PS4, when really the mom and dad did. Now every kid who didn't get a PS4 from Santa, who ended up getting a hat and uh, some t-shirts, are going to sit there and cry that Santa doesn't love them. Uh, it's, it's actually kind of gotten to be a horrible little holiday, because it's used for bullying others. And, what am I and it's also used now for kids to bully their parents, because... Kids are sitting there and saying, if you don't get me the newest iPhone, I'm going to call CPS on you. We actually have two neighbors in the building whose kids have used the CPS card to get what they want. And it, it's getting disgusting. And the man, uh, one of our people that I know basically turned around, and I'm not going to give names, turned around and said, go for it. It's Christmas time. I can't afford it. If you want to do that, fine. Let them take you away. Then I can just say I don't have to afford you wretched cretins because... You guys demand something that I can't afford. And you know how many parents out there would actually look at her and say, What a bad parent! You don't deserve to have your kids threatening them like that. Sorry, the kids threaten them. If parents can't threaten their kids and can't uh, punish their kids and, uh, and least of all uh, spank their kids anymore just because of child abuse... I'm sorry, I was abused as a child. There's a big difference between spanking... And abuse. Spanking, brother Aaron, is when you get out of line and being your mom sent wants to, to your room without dinner is not abuse. Uh, Spanking now is child abuse. Having your TV taken away from you is not abuse. Telling a child they cannot go outside and play right now because it's dinner time is not abuse. Telling your kid to come home from their friend's house is not abuse. However, in today's society, CPS looks at it as, oh, you told your child to come home from his friend's house? He said he was over there doing homework. No, he was playing video games and it was dinner time. He needed to come home. Sorry, that's abuse. That's not abuse. Then I tell them to take the kids and then tell me I'll see you in court after they wear my boot up their damn and butt. And then we wonder why our kids grow up to wear their pants down around their knees with baggy shirts to cover things up 
And they're being like, they're, yo, motherfucker, I'm going to cap you one if you don't do this. And they're listening to rap music and talking about uh, spanking hoes. You know what? If I was a, a middle class uh, woman whose child came home and was uh, singing a song about cocaine and hoes, I think I'd end up sending them to their room for a, without a meal for the next week. <laughs> All right. That's abuse. I, That's abuse. I am sorry. My child will never sit there and disrespect a female to the point of calling them a hoe and talking about how they need to give them blowjobs so that they can get cocaine or whatever. I No, this is wrong. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? We can't do anything about it anymore as parents because we have no f effing spines and we sit there and we allow the children basically to cry and moan, I'm being abused, my mom sent me to my room. And then the next thing, the school's got CPS on the door because little Timmy was sent to his room for misbehaving. And then Timmy's gone from the household. Parents live in fear of this every day. And you know, I remember back in the 80s when this whole mess started, is uh, one woman, one woman I think in Ohio, decided to uh, uh, call the police because she witnessed a mother spank her child at a grocery store. See, uh, the police came and immediately stripped the child in the store from the parent and tried to put them into foster care immediately because there was no friends, family, or whatever who could have taken the kid while the mother went to jail for abuse. And this was just a spanking. But it, the stories like that started popping up more and more and more, and it was sometime around 87 that they started showing up because I remember around that time my grandmother used to punish me. She'd spank me right in the middle of a store because I did something bad My at the store. My mother did that as and, well, but stop. And uh, she stopped doing it, and she I even heard her talking to people about how she couldn't do it anymore because they might just ta come and take me away. And I never really understood at that time who they were and who would take me away. All I knew is, hey, you know what? I'm not going to be punished publicly anymore. That didn't help me be a better person, but... Uh, I agree. I mean, you can't punish your kids. I mean, when I was growing up, my mom stopped at a certain age. I might have been 10 or 12. But then, you know, until her boyfriend left, it was privately with, you know, the belt or uh, a dowel rod, you know, on so, my backside. So technically, to punish me for, you know, the childish crimes I did. And then, you know, we even his daughter and his uh, son got it too. But the point is, is back then they could get away with it. Nowadays, you can't get away with anything. You lay a finger on your kid, it's child abuse, child abuse. Anyways, uh, I, I don't know anything more to say in this video. Uh, it's I don't know even how to classify it. It's kind of a rant about why parents do this type of stuff. It's not going to help with this holiday season now. There's only five days until Christmas. Uh, not going to have time to change your gift ideas or return things, really, and uh, change everything all out and rewrap things. It's kind of late for that. Uh, and you Maybe know, you guys should look for our videos and pre-planning pre for 2015 so you can actually get little Timmy or Tommy <laughs> what they want for 2015. And, and by the way, in my household, once I turned like 15, I, my, the dollar amount that I used to get for Christmas, my dad used to have it set at like $120. But when I ended up hitting 15 or 16, that amount dropped to like $40. It's like, you know what, we'll get you two CD player, uh, CDs, a gift card, and like a t-shirt. Here you go. Merry Christmas. And when I was a kid, it was all about making me happy and, uh, you know, bringing cheer and giving me things to do for the whole year that would keep me out of their hair, essentially. So... Yeah. I mean, it was like me. Uh, the year I got my Super NES, I had... The release games, there was like 30 games released. I had like half of them. Me, heck, half of them I didn't like, but the heck, other half I, I did. My dad always said something about $120 roughly to me, but I know as a kid that there was times that I'd get like two Transformers that were that large, which were like 50 bucks a piece, a uh, vehicle from Mask that was like that long and big, and it was like a $50 vehicle, and then I'd have like four or five sets of uh, huge sets of Legos, which were probably in the ballpark of 40 to to $100. In fact, I knew there were sets as much as $120. My mom tried to make me a boy growing up, and it's for some of you out there, you know me, with my uh, Tanuki Mario and stuff like this, but she wanted a boy. She went out, and one year she told me to go to bed early, 
and I didn't really want to, so I finally got to sleep, but uh, in the morning when it was snowing out and it was Christmas time, she basically had some large boxes. I mean, they were, I could take Aaron right now, squish him down with a plunger and he'd fit in it just like a giant box he'd put on the thing, but it had the G.I. Joe's aircraft carrier, it had the G.I. Joe's space shuttle command, it had other large things that these boxes were huge for. And my mom and, wanted me to have these, and it's like, wow. And, and, you know, there's something else to really keep in mind. Rita's a little special here, if you haven't realized. Most kids don't remember their Christmases and exactly what they got each Christmas and, uh, you know, all the things that their parents got them. In fact, the Lego sets, I couldn't even tell you the Lego sets I got. Well, you're lucky I mean, you I got would, Lego sets. I wouldn't remember them if they came from any particular set. I don't. I think I was into Legos before they started having Star Wars Legos. I remember Harry Potter. But. My birth, my Christmas times in 19, 1982 to 1986, I would get, which is the original, uh, Care Bears. Yeah, well, and anyways, what I was trying to say is that most of the Christmases I have, I can't remember whether I got this gift for this birthday or that Christmas, which year it was, etc. I vaguely remember the gifts. The part of Christmas that I always remembered, actually, was the decorating, the songs, uh, spending time with the family, family dinners, all the travels that we ended up doing because we'd go and see this aunt or this person or that person for dinner. Uh, I always look forward to going to my uh, Aunt Karen's and Uncle Keith's. Uh, I, I don't, they're not exactly aunt and uncle, but close enough. There's a form of cousin, um, but uh, I'm not the genealogical expert. Uh, even though I do like doing genealogy, I couldn't tell you a second cousin three times removed off the top of my head for whatever reason. So, you know, Aunt Karen's closest I can come up with. Anyways, uh, we used to go to her place for... Uh, for uh, Christmas dinner, and we used to go down to Kentucky now and then. I think we did that once or twice. But you know, the holiday travels were always something that I remember. Uh, having, I remember vaguely things like sitting in the car playing with my new toys, and uh, the dark lights and the flashing over, and the Christmas lights going on the sides of the roads and stuff like that. It's imprints that we have usually. Rita's special in a way that she actually remembers everything she got pretty much for each Christmas, and she doesn't have that vagueness that I have or most people I know have. Um, I remember uh, Easter, for example, my Game Boy for the Easter Bunny. That was cool. So, you know, to think about it as parents today, remember that your kid is not going to remember uh, the fact that you got him an iPhone. In fact, these electronic gadgets are becoming so commonplace that in the future, they won't even remember that they got an electronic. It'll be, we didn't really celebrate Christmas in my house. Yeah, you just got them an $800 gift, and 15 years, 20 years from now, they'll sit there. We never really celebrated when we were a kid. And I remember. are going to forget all about it. I, I remember one Christmas, I got a game. Yeah. I, I got a game, and it, was, it wasn't something I was into, right? So, anyways... Celebrating, my cousin pulls it out of the box, puts it in, and then he starts his own character. And I'm like, "What is this crap?" Well, later, me and my stepbrother are playing it, and I got into it. But you know what? My mom was pissed that they just took it out of the box and was like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna play this." It's Your like, present, they went and used it before you. Yeah, it was Final Fantasy two. Yeah, that game is. Anyways, I got nothing further bread. to say. You know, just just keep in mind that you're the part of the holidays the kids are gonna remember is the festivities around it. And Today we were talking talking about festivities. And if you're There's gonna nothing go, around here. And if you're going to go out of your way to buy an $800 device and have one present under a tree, if you even have a tree anymore, and you're just going to hand it to them and say, here, Merry Christmas. And they're going to open it and they'll be like, oh, new phone, and they will start programming it right away. In fact, they're not even going to sit there and smile and be like, <laughs> look what I got. <laughs> you know, you I lose remember. the childhood part, and all they're going to sit there and do for the whole day is... And or charge it for the whole day. They won't even get to use it. And what are they going to do when they use it? They're going to call up their best friend. Yeah, I got a new phone today. You know, and what if they're five, who are they going to call? Oh, time to call mom. Time to call dad. Uh, they got no one else to really call. They're five. 
but you're going to get him an $800 phone. That's wonderful. I'm glad that a kid can walk around with more money in his pocket at five years old than I make an entire month. Exactly. I got to live on the entire cost of that, and here they get it for Christmas, and they're five. I'm sorry, that's just wrong. It's horribly wrong. I don't care if you happen to have a million dollars coming into your household per week. You still shouldn't buy an $800 gift for your kid when they're five. Uh, yeah. Anyways, that's all I got to say. Yeah, I agree with Aaron's complete, uh, thank you, Aaron, complete uh, honesty on it, you know. Uh, you know, yeah, maybe I am special for remembering all this stuff for Christmas, now, but... I wasn't calling you special as in the way of special education or anything, special in the fact that you can actually remember it. Yeah, well, anyways... Yeah, maybe uh, I'm special for that fact, as Aaron said. I can remember what I got for Christmas. But the point is, is is God's blessed me well. But, you know, uh, when it comes to Christmases, you don't need to fork out a lot of money. I mean, let me tell you what happened. I decided to get my nephew some complete games for Super NES. And I lined it up. I got him everything he wanted. Guess what? He decided to sell them now because, oh, well, I need a few dollars here and there, but they were collector's games, complete, in the box. You know, instead it's like, oh, well, you know, they're, they're, they're. so technically, if you're going to buy something, make sure that they hold on to it. I hold on to my games and my Game Boy Advances and stuff like that, and I enjoy it. You know, I'm also wanting to get a complete uh, reconditioned or a uh, complete, uh, Game Boy, because I want to play my Game Boy again. I just like to sit there and be like, boop, 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 I mean, games are going in the way of cartridges is failing. CDs are the way to the future. And so I just, you know, would like, you know, what I like. So the bottom line is, is when it comes to Christmas, now, if you can afford all the expensive stuff, fine. But if you don't, don't have your. You gotta have to make some rules to protect yourself, and to make it even if your kids get bullied, to allow you know certain uh, things. But you can't allow them to you know demand things. I mean, I never demanded. All I did was Christmas morning, I'd wake up and the tree was overflowing with presents. Next, you know, the fireplace was going so we can get rid of the paper. Sometimes the Christmas gifts kind of stunk. Sometimes it didn't. I remember one year. One year I was looking for a game called uh, Breath of Fire for Game Boy Advance. It was the only gift I got that year. And uh, I had my GBA. So when I got it, I played it over and over and over until I got my Game Boy uh, Light. I think it was a Game Boy uh, yeah, Light. You know, the one that has the light, you know. And then it worked perfectly, too, you know, but, uh, you know, I mean, one year I was asking when Aaron was around in 2005, Christmas of 05, I asked for two Game Boy games that were very hard to get a hold of. My mom went out of her way and got them for me. It was the Harvest Moon games. At first, Aaron said, well, it says by the manual, the book, it's love it or hate it. Well, you know, there you go, you know, it's just... You don't have to sit there and say, Oh, well, I didn't get this. I'm unhappy. I mean, in my life, in my day and age, uh, being 36, I'm very content with most of everything, you know. I mean, I'm not content with certain things, but I'm content in the way that I like, um, you know, to be, uh, to be happy. I mean, look around. I got an email today from a cigar shop talking about buy one, get one free on certain cigars. I'm actually quite uh, content on it, you know. Um, I just wanted to um, share that, you know, with you. Being content is something that's satisfying, you know. So, while uh, people, you know, say, oh, well, I'm not content. I didn't get that new iPhone or iPad or computer. Just remember... Your family affords what you afford. One day, Christmas is not going to even be around. Uh, it's going to either kill the holiday spirit and kill the shopping market, or two, it's just going to phase out because no one wants to celebrate Christmas. They're not going to want to celebrate Christ. They don't want to celebrate what Christ has lived for. And they might all be atheist, or they might be Muslim, or Jewish, or whatever. I mean, the holidays right now is 
the shopping time, you know. So, there you have it. You know, it's all about the shopping. Though. When I grew up, it was about the shopping, but it's also about the children. Nowadays, even the children get very moody if they don't get what they want for Christmas. Or their birthdays. Or, you know, other holidays. So, I just wanted to share that with you. Uh, please add and subscribe if you like. Please post comments, feedback, suggestions. Please look for our, our Christmas video, which I'm going to take some time tonight to write up a list for three different age categories, and then I'll post one video at a time in the next, well, tomorrow. And that still gives you four days of ideas. You can also overnight your packages if you're ordering online, or you can just use this as a guide, uh, you know, or use it as a guide. So with that said, thank you. And may God bless the world.